Cleave. Welcome back to WVHS. This week we are missing one of our anchors, Maddie, as you can tell. So we have a special guest, Andrek, to fill in. This week's broadcast is very special because it's Andrek's birthday. He's turning 15, so make sure to wish him a happy birthday in the comments. Well, happy birthday. Now for the school news. Homecoming is October 23rd. Fall Pitcher Makeup Day is October 15th. The ACT for seniors is September 22nd, and for juniors it is October the 6th. Boot Camp for juniors is October the 1st through the 2nd. And now to Sarah with our student spotlight. I was told that I would be the star this week. That is the only reason I agreed to this farce. All right, you say the line then. And now to Sarah with our student spotlight. Thank you. For Student Spotlight this week, we'll be interviewing Gracie Coffin. Gracie is a senior and has been part of Color Guard for her entire high school career. She is also in the choir. I'm Gracie. Okay. Nothing really. I like it. I don't know. <laughs> it's been a while. I hope it's fun. Spiders. E-girl. Um, my theme song? Maybe Once Upon a Dream. My toys. I'm gonna keep it real with you, Chief. I think I would have been a way better student spotlight, but I mean, thanks Sarah and Gracie for something. I think Gracie is more interesting than you, Andrag. This week is about me, and I will not be treated like this. Instead of listening to you peasants, I choose to focus on when I, me, and Drek interviewed Rainy in honor of the hurricane and the mere factoid that her name has rain in it. Okay, diva. And now on to our teacher spotlight featuring Andrek again. I will murder you. Hello. Hello. Okay, first question. What's your favorite color? Blue. All right. Okay, next question. <laughs> Who's your favorite musical artist? Um, oh man, Eric Church. Okay, and then um, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Um, probably to fly. If you had to pick another job, what are you going to do, man? Oh man, what am I going to do? I'm going to be uh, just born rich. <laughs> Alright, what's your favorite dynasty out of China's five dynasties? I don't even know that they had dynasties. Are you a round earther, flat earther, or hollow earther? Oh, we all the way round. Wrong. Um, what are your thoughts on the great country of Botswana? Sounds like a cool name. Okay, and I heard that your husband worked for AT&T, and I would like to know why I couldn't get you verse in 2017. Um, he no longer works there, but that's a very good question. I guess because they don't think you need good internet, so I bet that's why he doesn't work there. Probably so. Okay, and then, um, what do you like more, grits or breakfast bread at the cafeteria? Grits, all the way. And I heard that, um, you really like the song Redneck Woman by oh Gretchen Wilson. Oh my Wilson. gosh, that's the worst song in the world. <laughs> and, um... Ms. Barnes said that you really like 2000s hip-hop. I do. What are some of your favorite 2000s oh, hip-hop Oh, man. Oh, uh, all of them. Um, let's see. Who do I like the best? I don't know. I really do like them all. You like Soldier Boy the best. Uh, I don't know about him as being the best, but he's all right. 
Do you like Lil B the bass god or the pack? I have no idea who those people are. Fake based. Alright. <laughs> um what's your social security number? I don't know it. Ask my mom. <laughs> okay, and here's our last question. And I say this every time because it's, it's just the oh most groundbreaking, groundbreaking question. Groundbreaking. Right? I do like to bake. Whatever. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> if there was ten thousand or ten million dollars on the side of a cliff and Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro on the other side, and the one you didn't pick would fall to its inevitable doom, what you gonna pick? Oh, I'm going for the money. Going for the money. Yeah. You gotta catch the money. Man, poor Nicolas Maduro. Who's gonna rule over Venezuela now? <laughs> you. All right. Cool. Thank you. Yo, this one from Miss Rainey. I don't even know who this is for real, but Miss Barnes was like, you should interview her. So I said, okay. Yeah. She got a scholarship to pitch. She really ballin' on him. She ballin'. Her favorite breakfast at school is grits, and that won't be forgotten. She loves 2000 hip hop, but not Lil B, so she's wrong. And Redneck Woman is her favorite song. That's what Miss Barnes said, so I'll just go along. She loves Grey's Anatomy. If you hate on that, well, then it is blasphemy. Her class is where it's happening, but I've never had it. So I can't confirm that if I'm keeping it real. But I bet that she has quality criteria and does not deliver her material in a perfunctory way. But that's just from my judgments. Anyway, uh, have a good day or something. She tried to steal my thunder, but we all know that my song is the best part of the whole interview. Speaking of song, I have your present right here. Happy birthday to you. In honor of Andrew's birthday, can you please stop singing? What? I thought my singing was beautiful. I, I thought I liked, told you that. I had <laughs> a good country twain going on there. Yeah, okay. On to more winners like me, Caroli and Dayon for Caroli's Corner. Hey Van Cleave, I am Dylan Caroli here with Austin for your weekly sports news. Howdy y'all, Dylan. Did you go to the Long Beach game last week? Yes, Austin, I did. And I saw the Bulldogs win against Long Beach 27-7. Wow. This week, Dayon Bilbo, who had, had over 200 yards against Long Beach. I bet he ran that much in an honor of Andrick's birthday. Yeah, I am pretty sure Dayon ran that for um, in honor of Andrick. Let's go to the interview in honor of Andrick then. The Admirals would explode after that and win big 42 to 14. Van Cleve has shown they can put points on the board early on this season. The young season they have, the Bulldogs looking to build off momentum from their first win last week on senior night. They got to work quickly with a three-play scoring drive highlighted by this 48-yard carry by Deion Bilbo, set up a 6-0 lead. Later in the first quarter, Devon Hand takes it 57 yards down the right sideline. He's gone for another Bulldog score to make it 12 nothing speed kills people speed kills second quarter now with the Bulldogs leading 19 14 and that guy mama there goes that man Dayon Bilbo ripping off a 22 yard run to set up another touchdown by Dayon Bilbo and the Bulldogs are cruising 26 14 Van Cleve have a night oh, oh. 71 no, I'm, I'm not getting that wrong. 71, that's not a typo, 71 to 34 is your final. That is the highest scoring game I can remember. Next, we have tech time. For my birthday wish, I said that we just don't have tech time because I hate tech time. I'm, I, 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 I'm with you on that one. <laughs> I already have it. Everyone's anymore. 
If you stop that asinine dabbing and quit besmirching our broadcast, we can get onto your segment. Okay. I read, man. You hear that? I said the smirch. Hello, I'm Tech, and welcome back to Tech Time. Today, let's see what the super historical computer chooses. Chooses. Computer. What are we talking about today? Cool. Alright, let's talk about the Battle of New Orleans. The main battle began on New Year's Day, 1815, with a British artillery barrage on the American lines. However, the American line, made of a mixed force of pirates, yes, I said pirates, U.S. Army regulars, Marines, 160 sailors from a ship that got itself stuck in the Mississippi River, 1,060 1060 men of the Louisiana militia and black volunteers, 1,357 Tennessee militiamen, 986 Kentucky militiamen, 150 mil Mississippi militiamen, and 52 Choctaw warriors staff firm, led by a sort of unknown historical figure by the name of Andrew Jackson. Yeah, I think I know that guy. Yeah, the president who later backstabbed the Choctaw off their land. Yeah, he was a jerk. Anyway, back to the story. Later in the battle, another force of Mississippi militiamen arrived after the probing attacks on the U.S. lines on December 22nd. Facing them was a British force of around 8,000 British regulars and free black men recruited from the West Indies. The Americans, however, did have naval support from several ships in the Mississippi River. However, their force was smaller than the British lines, numbering around 5,700. The British were not the best prepared, however, and did not have the elements rising. And the disadvantage is that their tactic was literally walk in a straight line to the Americans. They were fighting people who had been hunting all their lives. So this is why this is why America's never been invaded. You don't walk in a, in a straight line towards people who have been hunting all their life. They can and will hit you with their with their rifles. The question of the week this week is how do you celebrate your birthday? Android, how do you celebrate your birthday? I usually like to rob banks and shoot at the ops and etc. You know. Oh yeah, oh yeah me, too. me too. Thank the Lord, brave Jesus, I only deal with cash. Now let's see how the other people celebrate their birthday. Maybe we can hear them if they shut up over there. Yes. Hi, I'm Ashley and welcome back to the question of the week. Android's birthday is coming up, so this question relates to birthdays. How do you celebrate your birthday? And director. Happy birthday. And Hold up. Now, back to the anchors. You know what? I've had it up to here. I've had it up to here. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm quitting. I'm never, I'm never doing this again. Wait, we aren't done. You gotta say the line. Hi. Adventure, Adventure awaits. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we are filming three, two, one. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Andre. Happy birthday to you. But she can if you want, because people always come in here. It's never quiet. Okay. Can I do that on the video the whole time I answer questions? Yeah. yeah.